So, uh, what's going on here? It's the Jeff Matika show. Where it's an interview show. I, I thought there was going to be food here. No, it's, uh, maps. No, it's question, question, answer. Oh, well, I'm out of here. I have no food. Screw this. Whoa. Matika Show featuring Jeff Matika. What's your pre show routine? Like, do you uh, have uh, an some exercise you like to do, something special you like to eat? You know, I do every night about an hour and a half, two hours before a show, I do about a fistful of uh, pasta. <laughs> Isn't that a western? Spaghetti western. And then I go into the workout room, just do a bunch of stretches and heroin, junk, China White, horse, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I'm ready. No, I don't. Uh, steroids and get my blood pumping, drink a little coffee, and, and go. It's like having a kid. You're never ready. You just do it. <laughs> That's how you got the kid in the first place. <laughs> I think. There's different ways to get kids, by the way. Sometimes you just open your door and they just come on in like straight cats. That's the way I did it when I was like, Billy's mom was like, Is that one of my kids? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> White Wolf, how'd you find your parents? There's a reach out program at Hogwarts. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. I'm not here to impress you. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Mm. All right, let's get back uh, to the questions. What's it like for you to be on tour, different hotel every night, different currency every night, different language? Yeah, the thing is, that you kind of get stuck in this sort of this world. It's like this space capsule, all of your own world. You just can't. You know, you're on a tour bus. You've got everybody traveling with you. You're in your own. You're in your own world. You, you got different currency every morning. Sometimes you're so lethargic and tired from the show the night before. You wake up. Don't you? You don't even want to deal with speaking another language downstairs. But then some days you wake up and you're so absolutely invigorated. You just want to get up and go downstairs and try and speak the other language and go to a museum and go check out the local food and like this this year in England I went and saw the the Bowie exhibit there's times where you might want to go see a certain guitar shop because the guitars are so great in that particular town uh, Nashville always has like great stuff like that then there's places there's just places where you've heard a lot of cool things about that you might want to go you know check out and and get into and I don't it's a it's a great way to, to travel um, but it definitely has its ups and downs that's very interesting. I find a lot of the same to be true. Me too. I tried to open the milk and I ripped the fucking top off the loop off the top and the milk didn't open. Yeah, that's great. I didn't get a cup of coffee, okay? I didn't even need bring me any. <laughs> Let's see. What are some of your favorite movies? Ooh, favorite movies? Gosh, uh, Up the Academy. It was a Ralph Macchio movie when they go to this little boy's academy. Caddyshack, Animal House. Other than that, I haven't seen a good movie in a long time. What about E.T.? I liked E.T. a lot. Almost as much as I like Reese's Pieces. Ooh, I hear you there. What is your spirit animal? My spirit animal. <laughs> Uh, I think everybody likes to think their spirit animal would be like an eagle or or a uh, or a wolf or like a lion or a tiger or something. And mine's probably a weasel. I can see that. <laughs> Akuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best live show you've uh, ever seen? Well, I've never seen us play live, so we're out of the mix. I saw a really good show when I was, I was a kid. I saw the church play at like the, at the band, the church. There's some really good guitar work going on, and they're just um, 
So it was a, it was a really good show. But hey, was um, it a religious experience? And then I saw uh, Operation Ivy. Their last show was pretty phenomenal. We played that show, but I stepped back and stood in the crowd and like found a nice spot against the wall when I wasn't in the crowd and was just in awe of that. Their last show was like a, it was a surreal moment. It was pretty incredible. Will we ever hear another Frustrators album? We we always seem to manage to write the songs in one one to three days and then uh, find a week to record them uh, at the beginning of the year and another week to finish it at the end of the year. So. That's got to be frustrating. Actually, the name is because uh, we were so frustrated with uh, every name we picked out was already taken. We we tried to do the Ropers, that was gone. Uh, the Regal Beagles was taken. I took the name from Billy's son. Joey was walking down the hallway with a uh, guitar case in his hand, and Billy goes, "Where are you going?" He goes, "I'm going on tour." He goes, "Really?" He, he, he goes, "What's the name of your band?" He goes, uh, "The Wandering." It's like, wow, what a cool thing! He just took a word and. Tweaked it a little bit, so that's where we put the ORS on the end of frustrating. R riveting. <laughs> riveting. What was it? Uh, what was it like to meet your birth must mustard? <laughs> you must heard about that. You must heard about. That. What was it? Uh, what was it like to meet your birth mother uh, after all these years? And were you scared? Oh, uh, I was terrified. I was more scared of meeting my biological mother than. Uh, anything I've ever had to do. And it was even uh, more rough because, you know, I knew she was suffering for dementia. And so she was, um, she wanted nothing to do with me at first. I kind of had to fight my way in there. And, you know, I could only understand, sadly, about 10% of what was spoken between us. But um, we shared a cigarette and a cup of coffee and some smiles. And that's about the extent of what I got out of it, other than I got to see her face, see some uh, physical resemblance, um, and you know, I gave her a kiss on her head when I left, and she smelled like me too. It's kind of crazy, you know. And it was nice just to have a little bit of closure before she passed. So, get a little hot in here. Yeah. No, well, I take my jacket off. It's getting a little hot in here. I gotta take my cape off. These questions are getting kind of deep. Yeah. Hey, hey, here's here's a Brian Bimbrose picture. My favorite artist. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? What's what's your favorite kind of sandwich? Ooh, knuckle. <laughs> Manwich. Uh, oh, veggie sloppy joes. Banging. <laughs> White wolf, you like sandwiches? Yeah, I like them all. I do like I do like the veggie delight from uh, Subway. White oh. wolf, you're a big fan, right? White wolf. I love Subway. Yeah, we're trying to get him a sponsorship from Subway right now. Although I am not always vegetarian, uh, I choose to be mostly vegetarian, and I try and make sure that uh, if I killed it, I eat it. You kill a lot of things. Not very much, so I don't eat a whole lot of. What if you What if you step on an ant and you kill it? I'd probably eat it, but I'd cover it in chocolate first like they do in South America. Okay, I'm gonna make sure it wants it. Go back to that. I'm gonna need a lighter and a chocolate bar. Do you guys get jacked up on candy? Do you and the guys get jacked up on candy? Before shows, sometimes the only thing uh, that'll get me there is a good dose of chocolate. But I suspect that you would know that already, Brixton, since I always find your little hands in the chocolate bowl. Ooh, busted. <laughs> I always find he's got hiding places for chocolate. <laughs> I find him in his room, his pockets. Okay, buddy. Yeah, we, I got some uh, some questions for Brixton for you. Is that the guy in the back of the Green Day show? Is that the guy in the back of the Green Day show? I think, um, think he means you. I'm sort of the guy behind the guy behind that guy behind the amps what's the best place you've played <laughs> what's the best place you played on 99 revolution store i'm gonna have to go with behind the amps i would have to agree with that uh behind the amps is where you're best suited <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of like the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. Um, He's, he'll cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have legs. Oh. 
Is it is it true you wear guy liner? Is it true you wear guy liner? Absolutely. I've been looking for an excuse to wear makeup for my whole life. Ooh. I grew up on Motley Crue. What's the best snack backstage? Okay, uh, I have one for both of you guys. Uh, uh, what's the best snack backstage? Beef jerky. Diet Coke. I would say beef jerky, but White Wolf gets to the the table first. I usually don't have anything. Uh... Only the strong survive, Jack. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, coffee and I'm going to go with coffee. Coffee's nice. I wouldn't know. Oh, uh, I should have gotten you some. Yeah. Maybe you should be a better for, host to your guests. The budget for this show is very small. White Wolf, you thirsty? No, I just want this thing to be done. There's two of us now. Uh, I, I gotta go. See you later, alligator. Thanks, Brixton. All right, talk to you later, buddy. He's very aggressive. Jeez. Don't feed the animals. You know what? This show's gonna fail. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Just like Rudy's, it can't fail. <laughs> I play a 1958 Hammond B3 with a 122 Leslie, and then uh, I play a Roland Phantom G8. You wish. Just like that. I don't think you need much more than those two keyboards. You wish. You wish. I think you're out of a job. Later.